What I want to talk about now is a bunch of deceptive resolutions of secondary functions that are of a level of complexity that you often don't encounter, often aren't talked about until much later on in learning how to compose uh, or in music theory classes. The idea of a deceptive resolution is essentially going somewhere that is unexpected. So this takes that to a whole nother level. If we look at here, we have D major, and I wrote some lead sheet symbols, an E7 over G sharp to a D7 over A. This is an example of a deceptive resolution. Let's analyze it with Roman numerals. E7 uh, is an altered chord, chromatic chord. I look at E, go down a fifth to figure out where it's going to resolve. So E down to A. A is 5 in the key of D, so I know this is of 5. This would be a 5. 6-5 because it's in first inversion, so a 5-6-5 five, five of 5. It then resolves to this D7 over A. D7 is also a chromatic chord. D, I take that root and I go down a fifth to G. That tells me what I'm going to put down here uh, underneath the of part, which would be G would be a 4. With A in the base of a D7, that's a second inversion, so a 5-4-3. So, 5, 6, 5 of 5, we would expect that to resolve to a 5 chord, but it doesn't. It goes to a 5, 4, 3 of 4. Then the question is, how, why does that work? How does that work? Let's first listen to hear what it sounds like. So we, hear, we have our... And if we were to write this out, we would say G sharp, B, D, E. And you could say, okay, I'm going to go to A, C, D, F sharp. Just if we were to do a very close voicing. What do you notice? This is very, very smooth voice leading. And that is the key to why and how some of these unusual deceptive resolutions work. Smooth voice leading allows you to do almost anything. Here we have step up, step up, step up, and then here a common tone. Let's take a look at how this compares to another one. Here we have the same chord, we're still in the same key. So we have our 565 five of 5. Here though, we have a C sharp 7 over G sharp. C sharp is the root of my, my secondary function. It would resolve to something with an F sharp as its root. F sharp in the key of D major is a 3 chord. So this would be a 5 second inversion because of the G sharp in the bass. 5, 4, 3 of 3. Again, it's a 56505 five five that doesn't resolve as expected. But let's see how that would look. We take our same chord, G sharp, B, D, E, and we say, well, we're going to keep the G sharp, we're going to keep the B, the D will move down to C sharp, the E will move up to E sharp. So, common tone, common tone, down by step, up by step. Smooth voice leading. Let's listen to it. We have something that. I'm sorry. And let me give it a total context. We're in D major. So in that example, I just made up some chords after that. I went to 3, 4, 5, 1 in my key of D major. So these would just be one sequence within a key. So this could go, like I just did, 
to 3, as expected, to 4, 5, 1. So I could be moving along as expected in the key of D major. I could have this secondary function and instead of resolving it as expected as a, which would be to 5, and not resolving it like the more traditional deceptive, which is just 5, 7, bass move up a step to like a 6 chord. This is kind of like other deceptive resolutions, other ways. And how do you make those other deceptive resolutions? The answer is smooth voice leading. The reason that works is because the voice is, let me spell that correctly though, is because all of these voices are just either common tones or moving by steps. So it just feels like something is unfolding or evolving. And that kind of power of the scale, smooth voice leading concept allows you to do almost anything. Let's use one more example here. Let's take D7 over C. We're in the key of D major. So secondary function. D is our root of our secondary chord. It would resolve to something with a G. We have the D7 over here. So we know this is of 4. With a C in the base of a D7, that is 5, 4, 2. A 5, 4, 2 of 4, we would expect to resolve to 4, right? And it doesn't here. It goes to a B7. B is also a secondary function. B down a fifth would be E in the key of D major, and E is a 2 chord. So this would be 5, 7 of 2. Let's take a look what it would look like uh, in terms of how the voices would move. C, D, F sharp, A. The C would move down to a B, the D would move up to a D sharp, the F sharp would be a common tone, the A would be a common tone. So I'm going to do this. Those are the two notes that change. And so you can see that, that this very smooth voice leading concept can allow for these unexpected unexpected deceptive resolutions within secondary functions. Again, that's a whole field that is, has so many possibilities, but that's what a lot of the great composers enjoyed exploring. Other secondary functions. Now, moving away from the deceptive stuff. What if we have this chord progression, and I would ask you, please analyze. We're in the key of D major, I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to give you a little hint, but we have a D major triad with F sharp in the bass, A7 over E, A7 over G, D over F sharp to a D major triad root position, G sharp half diminished over B, C sharp major, F sharp minor, F sharp half diminished 7 over E, B7 over D, E minor, A7 over C sharp, D. This whole sequence here. How would you analyze it? Well, let's see what we can come up with. We start off, D over F sharp would be a 1 6 chord. That seems fine, we're in the key of D major, nothing unusual yet. A7 over E, that would be a 5 4 3, also quite common, to a 5 4 2, that's no problem. We can, we can change inversions of the same chord with, within, without having to resolve yet. That's very common, not unusual. So 5, 4, 3, we change our inversion to a 5, 4, 2. That goes to 1, 6, which is exactly what we would expect, to a 1 chord. Here we have G sharp half diminished 7 over B. This is our first chord that is not within the key of D major. So if we are analyzing this as secondary functions, well, G sharp half diminished 7, G sharp, this would be our 7, up a half step goes to A, right? So we could say 7, half diminished 7, uh, well, I, I, to take into account an inversion would be 6, 5, of A would be 5, 
right? 7 half diminished 6 5 of 5. Okay, I'm, I'm pausing here because I'm going to come back to this. Then a C sharp major triad, which, which is also not in the key of, of D major. That would be C sharp would resolve to an F sharp. F sharp is the 3 chord, right? So this would be 5 of 3. And then F sharp minor, we actually get that 3 chord. I'm looking at this saying, you know, 7 half number minor 6, 5 of 5, going to 5 of 3, that, I'd expect this, I'm expecting it to go to 5, and it, and, it, and it doesn't. It doesn't go to an A chord. So is this really how this chord is functioning? The answer is no. It is functioning, and if I look at it from this perspective, 5 of 3 to 3, that makes sense, right? That's on that's 5, 1. It really is like this is 2, 5, 1 in F sharp minor. So a, another way to analyze it that's more insightful would simply be to say 2, half diminished 6, 5, 5, 1, of 3. This whole three chords are secondary functions. So what we have now is a better analysis. It's, and this is going to lead us into, the, again, the, the, the overlap or the, the gray area between secondary functions and modulation. This is very much getting into that. But this would be a more insightful, meaningful way to look at those chords. Let's keep going. If we say F sharp half diminished 7 over E, um, that is a not in our key of D major. Um, if we have F sharp as the root of a 7 chord, we would expect it to resolve to a G chord. G would be 4, so this would be 7 half diminished 4 2 of 4. Going to a B7 with D sharp in the bass, B we would expect to go to an E for its resolution, that would be a 2. So this would be 5, 6, 5 of 2. Then we finally get 2. Then this would be 5, 6, 5, 1. Let's take a look here. Let's look closely. Here again, right here, that 5, 7 half diminished 4, 2 of 4 going to a 5, 6, 5 of 2 is an unusual progression. It's it's, it doesn't resolve to the 4 chord like we're expecting it, nor does it resolve deceptively, nor is it really, it, it just, it doesn't resolve deceptively. Uh, five, uh, you know, all major minor 7 chords were resolved deceptively. 7 chords almost always resolve to where you would expect them to go. This one doesn't. So that's my clue that this might be an other secondary function. So, what I do at this juncture is I say, well, if I were to look at this in a bigger picture, maybe this isn't the secondary. Maybe this is, uh, maybe this is really functioning like a, like a, 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 a four chord or a two chord or a three chord or a six chord. Maybe it's some other secondary function. I say, well, F sharp, half diminished seven, B seven, E minor. Well. That would look like 2, 5, 1 in the key of E minor. So that's actually a lot. What I, this is what I would go for. I would call this 2 half diminished 4, 2 to 5, 6, 5 to 1 of 2. So just like I did this part here and said this is. A, a, a secondary function. This is a, a two chord as a secondary function. This is also the same thing. It's the same pattern, but just in of a different kind of tonicized home base. Let's hear what that sounds like. Our key is D major.
there we go. That's a, that's a great sounding chord progression. And this allows us to kind of say, oh look, we kind of temporarily have this 2-5-1 here on the 3 chord, and another 2-5-1 here on the, uh, on the 2 chord. So this one's 2-5-1 in the 3, 2-5-1 in the 2. Yet we still pretty much are staying in our key of D major, because these are so brief. They're just really just two chords, two or three chords that are, are not easily analyzed in our home key. We have two, two chromatic chords and then a, a, a diatonic chord that we are, are tonicizing. So there you go, a whole bunch of new sophisticated chromatic harmonies and resolutions for you to sink your teeth into.